Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. I'm David Edge. I'm your servant in Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you to our 1030 service. Uh, this morning, we are going to be looking at the epistle lesson, which is Hebrews chapter 4. The question is, where can we find rest? And we're going to see that we can find rest for our souls, not only in having a, a break from everything else that's going on, but from really from serving others and doing what God has us to do and in store for us. Let's go ahead and rise and greet those around you. I invite you to rise as we sing together our opening song, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We take a moment to silently confess our sins to God our Father. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and it's for his sake that he forgives you all your sins. As the called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, You have given exceedingly great and precious promises to those who trust in you. Grant us so firmly to believe in your Son, Jesus, that our faith may never be found wanting. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we get to spend time in our first lesson, which is the Old Testament reading, Genesis chapter 2. Genesis 2, verses 1 through 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hebrews 4, chapter 1 through 13. Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. For God knew, for, I mean, for good news came to us just as to them, but the message they heard did not benefit them, because they were not united by faith with, with those who listened. For we who have believed enter that rest, as he has said. And I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Although his works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he has somewhere spoken of the seventh day in this way. And God rested on the seventh day from all his works. And again in the passage, he said, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains for someone to enter it, and those who formerly received the good news failed to enter because of disobedience. Again, he appoints a certain day, today, saying through David so long afterward, in the words already quoted, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Jesus, I mean Joshua, had given them the rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, 
of joints and of marrow and um, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Out of respect for the words and ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into hell. He sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, I invite up all the children for the children's message. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? All right. Well, I have an iPad here, and I want to show you something, but, uh, oh, you know, well, this is embarrassing. I'm out of batteries on it. Oh, my goodness. I must have forgotten to charge it. You know, if you ever feel like sometimes that um, you get exhausted, you ever feel like your batteries in your body are ever going out sometimes, what are some things that you do that maybe exhaust you? What are some things that make you tired? Hava? Staying up past 2 a.m. Staying up past 2 a.m. reading. Yeah, on a school night. Uh huh. We need to talk. Uh huh. Abigail. Sleeping too much makes you tired. Really? That's interesting. I believe that. Yes, sir, Mr. Luke. Oh, that's cool. So reading your action Bible, but if you stay up too late, sometimes it'll make you tired. Yeah, Eliana. Waking up. up. Sometimes waking up can be hard to do, huh? You know what? I agree. I remember, you know, things that I do that make me tired is working or doing work around the house or doing chores, even going to school. All that's good stuff, right? But you know what? It makes us tired. So it kind of feels like I'm drained and feels like my batteries are kind of drained. But guess what? Look at this. Look what I have here. A handy dandy charger. That's right. So if I were to charge this iPad here, that the batteries are going to get charged eventually, right? So what are some ways that... Wait, hold on. Let me just say it this way. So when we plug in... Now we get to be charged. Guess what? What's not plugged? You're right. Yeah, we got to find a plug. 
But when we find the plug, then it'll start charging again, right? You know some things that help, you know some things that help charge us um, is going to church. And here, you know, it's like we can find a kind of rest here and we can find being charged and we can find a way to get renewed, refreshed. You know what those words mean? Yes, yes, Isaiah, what is it? You made a slide. You made a what? Oh, you did? So you can just slide down. Oh, okay. So you, you can make a slide on the stairs so you can just slide down. Well, that's a great, that's a great idea. So you don't have to walk downstairs. You know, you can also do like a fireman's pole. You can also do a fireman's pole downstairs, which is what I want to do, but I was told I can't do that. Anyway, but... So here's a question for you. You guys get tired. I get tired too. What are some ways that we can find a way to plug in? When we plug in to Jesus and we plug into his word, then it's going to help charge our batteries, right? It's going to help make us new. And that way, when we were tired, we feel exhausted and we feel like we have nothing. But when we get to plug into God's word, is that now it's like our batteries get to be recharged. Abigail. Yeah. Okay. So that's what my prayer is for you guys, is that during a time like now, when we get to hear God's word, when we get to sing his songs, that all of this, it's like we're being plugged into God and that we get to be refreshed and recharged. Let's pray. Dear God, God, thank you you for for giving us your word. That makes us us not feel tired, tired, but renewed. renewed. Amen. Amen. All right. Will you guys go back to your seats? I better find a plug, huh? I think so. All right. We're going to go now to our sermon song. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Well, if you're anything like me, uh, there's kind of two default modes in my existence. On the one hand, I work, and it's enjoyable work most of the time. I'm talking about when I come in uh, and drive in here to, to church, and then I put in the hours here. But it's not only my vocation or my occupation, but, I mean, work mode continues when I go home. And I look around, and it's like a whole hurricane uh, came through our house somehow. So got to put on my FEMA jacket and hat, uh, help pick up Hurricane Edge that, that came through. And so uh, there's dishes, there's laundry, there's always you know yard work, there's always things to be done, right? That's work, and it seems like it never ends. But when it finally does, and the kids are finally in bed and all is well, then we get to sloth. You know, then I get to binge whatever shows and then I just get to relax on the couch and kind of lie down. And uh, as much as I would say, as much as I enjoy the sloth part, which uh, part of me does, after a while it gets pretty old pretty fast. And then it doesn't get much better. And I got to tell you, I don't know about you, but if you ever binge some shows uh, hours later, I don't know how well you feel. Do you really feel rested after doing all of that? And, and then you wake up, and, and now you got to wake up, especially for staying up too late, binging shows or whatever, and you know just scrolling on the Facebook. And then you got to wake up, and you got to go back to work, right? And so regardless that, no matter what you're doing, it's not really all that restful. And so my question is, is there really a third mode? Uh, you know, speaking of this, there's an article that I saw that talked about kids, and it said that when kids go to, um, when, when they have too much screen time, whether they're on any device, whether it's a Switch, iPad, TV, that you think that after hours on end of a kid being on the screen that they're really rested as a result, but they talk about this screen fatigue. Have you ever heard those words before? A screen fatigue that kicks in and that kids are not really rested afterwards that they might have wasted a lot of time or maybe it could have even been somewhat educational at the very best but regardless that all the screen it's not really making them feel refreshed afterwards instead that they need something else and what is this other thing and it's really play is what they're saying for kids and it occurred to me that you know this is true not only for kids, but isn't that true for us as well? That isn't there a better rest that we get to have, and not just something of work or sloth even, but, but is there really a play that is what it means to be human? And if anything, isn't that a biblical view of rest? Isn't that really what the Sabbath is all about? That the Sabbath is about a few things. It's about God's word. It's about worship. It's, it's about rest, but how is it that they rest? And what I want us to do today is to actually explore this view of rest. And we're going to see that what the Sabbath intention here is not simply a do-nothing sloth kind of, hey, we all just need to go home and take a nap. And I mean, if you need a nap, then fine. But it's not simply just staying home and doing nothing, but actually to get a better kind of rest, a Sabbath rest, is that it means not only hearing God's word and worshiping him, but is that there's a kind of uh, play to it, a rest and play that has to do with Sabbath. And really within this play mentality is really about serving others. We're going to see that that's the fullness of what it means really to be human and how we can find rest for our souls is by really serving others and being there for other people. Where do I get this? Well, let's look at our verse for today, and then we're going to unpack Hebrews chapter 4 on this. So let's read together. Let us, therefore, strive to enter that rest, so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we ask that uh, we can uh, find our true rest in you. Lord, we're exhausted, whether it's uh, working all the time or whether it's binging, but regardless that we're just, we're tired, Lord. And we come to you uh, with nothing to offer, but Lord, you have so much to offer us. And so Lord, I ask that you can uh, give us 
uh, the kind of rest that our, our bodies long for, not just doing nothing, but doing stuff for others and for you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our God. Amen. So to look at the context of this, we go back to chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Therefore, while the promise of entering God's rest still stands, let us fear, lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. So this is part of a larger discussion, really, of God's people in the wilderness. So back in the Old Testament, after the Israelites got free of slavery in Egypt, that they spent 40 years waiting for a promised land. And then when they enter this promised land, God promises them a kind of rest. But here's the thing, even after they get into that promised land, that there's an even greater rest that God promises, and that really points to Jesus, and that's where we are today. So no matter where in the world we are, that we are in Christ, and that really is our true rest. Where am I getting this from? Well, If we continue reading, it says, Since therefore it remains for some to enter it, that's the rest, and those who formerly received the good news fail to enter because of disobedience. That as they were out there in the desert for 40 years, that people were tempted by various things. And one of the things that they had to give up was really their pride, their ego. They had to give really themselves up to get a greater reward in order to really enter into God's rest, that they had to give up their own sense of self in this way. And many people refused to do so because of disobedience. Again, he appoints a certain day today saying through David, so long afterwards in the words already quoted, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. So friends, today you have a chance to enter God's rest. Don't disobey, don't harden your hearts against God, but instead receive what God has for you. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken of another day later on. So then there remains the Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also entered, has also rested from his works as God did from his. These verses right here show my main argument that in many ways, this promised land was the rest that God had promised them. However, though, even after they got there, once they they made their way into Jericho and the other cities and they got into promised land, that there's still a greater promise of rest and protection that they had. And you might say, well, you know, think about the promised land, that they they got into the land that God promised them, and they they got to rest from that laboring of wandering, of all that work that they had. All of that, in a way, was finished, and all of that's true. But even though that they entered this new territory, and even if they took a day off, which is the Sabbath day, which they were commanded to do, so they should have, even after they did all of that, that there's still a greater rest for God's people. They were still waiting on something else to happen. And that is that they get to enter the same rest that God had when he rested on the Sabbath day. And you you say, well, all this sounds great. Well, how is it that we need it? And, And here's the thing is that unfortunately we cannot do this by ourselves. We can strive to enter this rest. Uh, we, we can strive for this. Let us therefore strive to enter the rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. But how is it that we can enter into it? And we are completely dependent on Christ to actually bring us into his rest, that we can strive for it, that there's a greater rest for you that is something so much greater than taking a day off or, or even sleeping in, that there's a real rest for your soul. And it's found at the altar of God. That's, that's where it is. And Christ is the one who reaches out to you and, and forgives you. He's the one who brings you into that rest. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have 
a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We are completely dependent on Christ that we, we, we want a greater rest. We want a, a true rest for our souls. You know, I think about our society at large. How, how sick are we as a society? You know, it seems like we work more and more. Americans put in more work than most other countries. And man, we, we certainly work and we study hard. Uh, we're very industrious, very productive, sure. But um, are we healthy? Are we better off as a result? And then maybe we can uh, binge more content than, you know, probably other countries as well. See, we're, we're, we're good at that too. But uh, are we really good at, at, at having a kind of rest for our souls uh, to really find grace in, in our time of need? Are we really good at uh, going before God's throne of grace, knowing that we, we cannot enter into God's presence alone, but it's, that it's Christ who reaches out to us and he invites us into this. And all too often, we just want to say no to God. We want to say, no, I got it. I can do this on my own. Um, but we know that that's not really working out for us. So, so God offers us something. He offers us rest and play in this Sabbath life, in this Sabbath day even, he offers it. See, here's the thing is that Christ is the one who brings us into his rest, that in order to enter into the rest that God himself had on the seventh day, in order to do that, that Christ himself is the one who brings us into this. And what do we get? Not just rest, but we also get mercy and we get his grace. Sabbath is not sloth mode. Sabbath is not simply just taking time off. Although it could be that to a degree, it could be sleeping in on a Saturday, sure. It could be taking a nap and your body tells you that maybe you, you do need it. But it's not simply just the absence of work. And that, that's the thing that people did not understand in the New Testament. When Jesus arrives on the scene, Remember that there's a big discussion about what the Sabbath was all about, right? That they were good at taking work away from themselves, that they were good at not working, that they said, okay, God commands us not to cook. Fine, we won't cook. God commands us not to walk too much. Fine, I'm not going to take too many steps today. So the Sabbath is not simply about just lying in bed all day or doing nothing. But instead, what is the heart of Sabbath? And Jesus even tells them that it's really about serving. He says that uh, he goes around, and what does he do? He heals people on the Sabbath. Why? Because it's not simply not doing something, but it is doing something. Sure it is. But it's love for someone. So yeah, of course he's going to heal. He takes um, the, the grain off of uh, the stems, kind of makes instant granola is what Jesus does. And and they're like, oh my gosh, he's working. And it's like, you're, you're totally missing the point here. And so I think for us as well that we want to go back to the heart of Sabbath, which is not only about resting, which it is, but it's finding a greater rest, something that the world cannot bring, something that the world cannot offer, but is instead something that, that Christ has to give to us. And so today I want us to really change our mentality of how we see really serving other people, that we can't see this as work. We could see this as another obligation. We could see this as adding to our schedule and adding to our calendar. And it's just one more thing that we have to do. And can we, you know, can you believe that the pastor would have the audacity to ask us to do anything else? Because don't we all know how busy we are? And, and yes, I, I believe that. I believe that you are incredibly busy. We all are. So, so am I. As we enter to this next year, though, we have a chance to reevaluate our priorities. We're already, um, you know, what, six weeks out, seven weeks out from the new year. Uh, so it's a little bit of time. But I want us to think about our priorities for this new year. And one way is to ask the questions, well, what does it really mean to live into the Sabbath? 
And yeah, you know, what is it that we can be doing to serve others in a greater way? I'm not asking you to do this, or this is not really something that um, I'm pushing just to add one more thing in terms of work. But I really want this to be a kind of rest for you and a kind of play within your minds. We have a form that uh, you'll be handed out after you leave the ushers. Uh, have these forms. It's called How Can I Serve? We did it last year. We're doing it again. Uh, we're going to be doing it every year. And it just allows us to look at our hobbies, to look at the things that we can craft, the things that we can do with our hands, the ways that we can serve. And really, the purpose of this, again, is to not just add another work to you, but that this is really good for you and that you can find a way to really find rest, true rest, as you get to serve other people. What do I mean by this? Let me give you just a quick example. When um, I was volunteering for Family Promise within our church a few weeks ago, and what happened was that this was on a Saturday, and uh, I had a a new members class, and some of you were there, and it was an all-day class. And I don't know about you, but by the end of that, I was tired. <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh man, you know, it was a great class, it was awesome, but you know, after putting in a full week of, of work, you know, throughout earlier that week, then all day Saturday, and then I got home, and a football game was on, which for me just means nap. You know, like that's what, fo what football games mean, you know, for me. And I just wanted to kind of rest because, man, I was tired. I realized, though, that I was on to host for Family Promise that night, uh, that evening. And that meant, like, in 30 minutes later, I had to get up and, and come back to church. And I was just like, oh, man, I got nothing. You know, I can barely keep my eyes open. I, my, my body was just tired, right? And so I even made a couple phone calls, a couple texts saying, like, hey, can you bail me out? You know, I don't know if I can do this, but uh, no one else was able to cover. And I just said, you know, I'm going to make the most of it. And I'm going to take my kids with me. So we got the kids together. Uh, me and my, my, my kids, we, we come up here. And what this is, Family Promise is a ministry for families that are in need of a home or, or rent assistance. So uh, those that are down on their luck and they have kids, uh, that this ministry allows them to get back on their feet. But in the time being that they uh, are here and we're hosting a meal for them and we're hosting them for the night and so forth that week. And it's not only our church, but it's like a dozen other churches in our area that do this. And so it's a wonderful ministry. But I got to tell you, when I came in though, I was just tired. I was like, man, and then I have church the next day. I was just, just physically tired, right? That happens. But as uh, my kids and I sat down for dinner with them, uh, with this uh, family, that we got to hear their stories. And it was just, it was just enjoyable to, to have dinner with someone else and to meet someone new and, and get to hear kind of their interest. And, and my kids are no different than their kids, right? That they have similar hobbies, shows, and all that. Um, and then afterwards, we got to play shoots and ladders and some board games. And uh, I'm not like a huge board game person. But, you know, it was just, it was enjoyable. And it just lifted up all of our spirits. And so even though I was incredibly exhausted before, when I left that evening, I just felt really levitated. I just felt very alive. And it was just very enjoyable to, to get to, to serve someone else and just to spend time with them. And it was just very enjoyable. And so when I left, I actually had more energy leaving than I did coming on in. And it occurred to me then, that if I wasn't doing this ministry, that what I would be is that I would be at home, uh, probably asleep on the couch, or you know, probably like half asleep, half cranky, you know, something like that is probably where I would have been. But I got to a, a better place, a better rest for my soul. And yeah, I just, I felt better and my kids got to experience and they got to serve someone. And so it's true that by doing a ministry like this, that you just not only feel better, but it's true rest for your soul. It's something that we cannot have gotten at home watching football, as great as that could be, and that has its place. But it's not the entirety of what it means to have as a Sabbath rest. And so that's really where I'm at, and that's what I'm arguing for today, is for us to view it through that lens, that we can see a rest, the Sabbath rest, is either 
not just a work where we have to be doing something, nor is it only just a sloth or kind of the veg and binge, because that gets tiring too, and that doesn't really help us. But Christ offers us something greater. We get to really enter his full Sabbath rest. Amen. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep and guard your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll go now to our offering. And so at this time, I invite the ushers forward. We use this as a chance to give back to our generous God uh, as we give sacrificially to him. We also uh, will use this as a time to collect any prayer request and prepare our hearts for the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you sent your Holy Spirit to sanctify and keep your people in the, in the true faith. Preserve them from false doctrine and curb and restrain all error. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you call us to honor the authority set over us. Look with favor upon those who hold office in this land, especially our president and Congress, our judges and magistrates, our governor and legislature. Preserve them from evil and bless them in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, your son came not to be served, but to serve, especially to serve those who are ignored and despised. Comfort the afflicted and the troubled, for all women with child, all young children, all who mourn, and all who are in need, especially for those who have asked for our prayers, for those that we name silently in our hearts now. In our special prayers, we pray for those that have final exams for teachers and students, for Justin, for wisdom for him, for Arthur, for Andrew who has school, for Calvin, for family-related issues, Lord, for Dorothy who is having family and health issues, Lord, we ask that you can be with her. For Jesse, who is sick, and we have a Thanksgiving prayer for Ruby, who is out of the hospital and is home with her family. For Hunter Bernie, who is starting treatments, and for the Ewing's uh, sarcoma, who has spine cancer. For Beth, who is a, an ex coworker of Wendell's, is in the hospital with lung disease and needs a lung transplant. For Paul Jones, recovery from injuries from a fall and for his health issues, Lord. For Colt, he's a teammate of Micah's who broke his leg in a football game. Also for the Munts family, the mourning the loss of Wade Munts. Finally, Lord, for the prayers for the Robertson family following the death of Steve Robertson. 
Lord, you know their needs and all of the needs that we have lifted before you then. Lord, we ask for those who are suffering, that you can bring an end to their suffering. For those who struggle with faith issues, that you can increase their faith and their trust in you. Lord, in your mercy, graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, keep us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. be seated have uh, several announcements here for you so we'll go quick one of which is that next weekend we are having a dce candidate so we've interviewed him uh, before on zoom and now we get to have an in-person interview so our call committee has gone through several dce people and this is one that's going to be available next weekend he's going to come visit with his family and we're going to have a meet and greet afterwards so come and ask questions, get to know him. We have not issued a call or anything for him, but we have um, done interviews. And so this is part of the interview process. And so uh, let me know what you think about him or talk to someone on the call committee. And then we'll go from there to issue him a call if uh, the Holy Spirit leads us in that direction. All right, so next one is that there's a voters meeting next uh, Sunday. So also on the 17th. And we're just going to do this in between services during the adult uh, Bible study time that we are going to discuss the new church organization structure as well as uh, bylaw changes. Our constitution requires us to have a previous meeting to uh, talk more and present the bylaw changes. And then we'll actually vote on it on the annual voters meeting, which is December 8th. But uh, that's what that's going to be. So next one here. You Thanksgiving dinner. Josh, do you want to say anything about this? Uh, last time I put your wife on the spot.
So I'll just put you on the spot this time. All right. So, um, equal, equal opportunity around here, Josh. Well, I appreciate that. You're, you're very welcome. Uh, we're having our annual youth Thanksgiving dinner uh, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. We do it every year. Uh, the, it's serve family style, and the youth serve. Uh, we've got uh, turkeys that probably will be smoked this year, which is, which is a really cool perk if you've never tried that before. Uh, Blake does a great job for that. Stays up all night out there at the pavilion with the smoker and does that for us. So some really good food. It's served family style by the youth, and this is one of their big fundraisers that they're working towards for the gathering next summer. Uh, we're also going to add a silent auction to it this year. Uh, so, uh, so we'll have some items out there for the a silent auction while we're doing it to increase the fundraising. And if you've got something you'd like to donate, we'd definitely use it, but we're not asking for that. But, but that has been a discussion topic. But the the youth are coming up with items, and we've got some people that uh, have offered stuff. But uh, So look forward to that. We hope to see you there. We'll have a sign-up there on the back bulletin board in the next uh, couple, probably by next Sunday, we'll have a sign-up there. Awesome. And then also just to mark your calendars that right after the dinner is that at 7 o'clock, we're going to have our Thanksgiving Eve worship. Uh, and so we'll just do the service uh, at 7 o'clock. And then... Uh, Lindell, if you want to tell us about, or no, hold on, before we get to, to that, uh, Dee Dee Papa. So she uh, was our interim director of music, and uh, the elders have allowed her to uh, stay on as the permanent position for it. So it's still a part-time position, but she's going to be staying on. We had her as an interim just to uh, allow her to reevaluate the position and figure out what her needs are. And so we've done that now really since June. And so then our elders voted to uh, ask her to stay on, and she has agreed. Uh, but I would celebrate this with her, but she is not here. She's in Germany. Uh, so I figured that uh, what we'll do is that we'll wait till she gets back from Germany. And then on December 8th, we're going to have a little celebration for her, and we're going to be able to install her and just celebrate that. But uh, just so you all know that that's been changed officially, but we're going to celebrate and install her on December 8th. Okay, so now I think we're on to the men's retreat. So, Wendell, you want to tell us about the men's retreat? Well, this past weekend, we had a men's retreat out at Lake Texoma. It was at the Texas Elks camp, which is the old LOM LOMT camp. And 13 of us got to go. And just to kind of let you know what we did, we had some devotion time, some gathering time. We got to know each other real well. And there's just some talking. And we're kind of working toward helping with the strategic meetings and stuff we're going through. And... Uh, but just going to let you know, this is going to be an annual thing every year. It was, it was a good opportunity for us to get to know each other. Um, some of us, we know each other, but we didn't know each other until after this weekend. So it's a great event. So it's going to be annual. And we're also going to encourage, encourage the ladies that each, maybe each year that y'all can start a retreat as well to bring our church forward. And that was one of our discussions uh, because of our strategic meeting, where we're going to go in the future. And that's what we did here. And so that's what we're hoping to get out of these retreats in the future. Awesome. Thank you. We don't have a slide for you, but it is in the announcement loop. But uh, Josh, tell us about the progressive dinner. So the, the youth again, uh, December 8th, which is a Sunday, we are having our Christmas party and we're going to do a progressive dinner. It's going to involve the junior high and the senior high youth both. And a progressive dinner, if you're not familiar with it, uh, we're going to start at one location and have some appetizers. Then everybody caravans to another location. We'll have kind of a salad. And we go to another location, and we have the main course. And then we finish at a fourth location where we have desserts, a little campfire set up, kind of some, some good fun and fellowship with a devotion and a gift exchange. So to that end, what we need are people that are willing to be some of those stops for us. We've got the first stop and the last stop squared away. But we're looking for somebody that might be willing to host uh, 10 to 15 uh, people in your home for that second stop, which is kind of like the salad and the pre-meal, and then the third stop, which is the actual uh, main course meal. So if you feel led to do that or it's something that you'd like to participate in, uh, get with Amy or I, and we will uh, kind of look at everybody that's offered in the strategic locations as far as our travel plan to get from A to B, and, uh, and we will gladly take a couple of y'all up on that. One of the perks is that after you host that meal, you get to leave your dirty house and go with the group to the next stop and finish that fellowship off through the rest of the caravan. So if you feel led to do that, get up with one of us. We'd be more than happy to, to add you to the list and start looking at that. 
Awesome. If you want to hand it over to Elaine, it looks like Elaine has something. You got something for Operation Christmas Child? Of course. So um, National Collection Week is coming up the 18th through the 25th. I need volunteers to help collect those shoe boxes. The, t the times are in the bulletin. I mean, talk to me or Chrissy. There's a sign-up sheet on the um, table out there. Um, I'm going to really need help because, thank the Lord, I, found, I got a job. And so that I don't know how that's going to work out yet with collecting shoe boxes, but I'll need some volunteers to help me, please. And um, keep bringing your shoe boxes and keep stacking them out there. Thank you. Awesome. And then uh, I got another thing, and that is that for, uh, let's see here. What was I going to say? Pictures, the directory photos. If you have not gotten your photo taken, please do so. Even if you got yours like a year ago or six months ago, that we're redoing all of them. Uh, so the way they all look the same, done by the same people. And so we're having Mark and Sherry Harless that are taking the photos. So if you have not, today's the last day, at least for now, uh, at least for a while. So it's not too late. So if you have not had your photo taken just after the service, go meet them in the education wing and they can do that for you. Finally, on my way out, just a reminder, we have the How Can I Serve form. So these are paper forms uh, that you can do. Uh, if you are like me and in, you don't know how to fill out something on pencil and paper because you got to go find a pencil or something, then there's a QR code and you can do it online as well. So it's up to you guys. And we'll have our ushers hand it out. Yes. And then there's a church council meeting afterwards as well. So if you're in the church council, uh, we'll be meeting right after this. So get your photo taken, go do the how can I serve forum, church council, all kinds of stuff, man. Why are we so busy, you know? All right. Love you all. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.